Hey guys, it's Joanne with another coding interview question and this one is called minimum cost to hire K workers. This one is really popular with Google, probably on account of it being really difficult. Uh, it's also labeled as a lit code hard and I do agree with that label. So that's exactly why I wanted to make this video. I really hope it will help you guys. And if it does, please let me know in the comment section because I would love to know. Okay, so let's get straight into the problem description. There are N workers. The IS worker has a quality measurement and a minimum wage expectation. I'm just going to change the name of the array because I want it to be called expected wage. Now we want to hire exactly K workers to form a paid group. When hiring a group of K workers, we must pay them according to the following rules. So the first rule is that every worker in the paid group should be paid in the ratio of their quality compared to other workers in the group. And in other words, it means that the ratio between the offers that we make to any two workers has to be exactly equal to the ratio between their qualities. So in other words, the first rule says exactly that. Now the second rule is that every worker in the paid group must be paid at least their minimum wage expectation. So again, in other words, the, the offer that we make them has to be uh, larger or equal to the expected wage of the worker. Now we want to return the least amount of money needed to form a paid group satisfying the above conditions. Okay, so we want to return the uh, minimum cost that it will take us to hire K workers um, considering these rules. So the first important thing to notice here is that because we're trying to pay the least amount of money, there is always going to be at least one worker in the group that is paid exactly what he asked for. Otherwise, we pay everyone more than they wanted, which is a missed opportunity, right? We could be paying everyone a little less and still satisfy the conditions. So again, there's always going to be at least one worker in the group that is paid his expected wage. We'll call that worker the captain. So the second important insight here is that once we decide who the captain is, once we decide uh, what to pay one worker, we know exactly what we need to pay all of the others. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So uh, we decided that we're going to pay the captain his expected wage, right? Now we have this uh, second rule that states that the um, ratio between offers to any two workers, including that of the captain, is equal to the uh, ratio of their qualities. So if we substitute uh, this uh, term with this one, we get to this equation here. Now I want to isolate this term. So I'm going to multiply both sides with the captain's expected wage. And then I get to this equation here. So basically what this means is that once we decide who the captain is, we will know the value of these two terms and then we will know exactly what we need to offer each of the other workers. The amount that we'll need to offer to worker I is equal to the quality of worker I multiplied by the captain's ratio. Now let's see an example. So we have uh, three workers in this example. We're going to call them J, Tom and Ben. Each worker has a quality measurement and an expected wage. And we want to find the minimum cost to hire two workers. So the way we approach this is we give each worker a chance to be captain. Then for each captain, we calculate how much we're going to have to pay each of the other workers. Then we pick the two workers that cost the least amount of money. And that's going to be the cost for this captain. And then at the end, we will pick the uh, group that costs the least out of all of the captains. Now let's see how this works. So if uh, J is the captain, we're going to pay his minimum wage expectation, which is 80. And then the captain's ratio is going to be 80 divided by 10 because 10 is J's quality. So eight. And then we're going to offer Tom five, which is his quality, multiplied by eight, which is the captain's ratio. So 40. Then we're going to offer Ben 15 times eight, which is 120. And then we're going to pick the two uh, workers in this group that cost the least, which are uh, J and Tom. So the minimum cost with J being the captain is 120. Now, if Tom is the captain, we're going to pay his expected wage, so uh, 35. And then the captain's ratio is going to be uh, 35 divided by five, which is seven. So J is going to be offered 10 multiplied by seven, which is 70. Now notice we're not allowed to offer 70 to J because his minimum expectation is 80. Uh, so if Tom is the captain, we are not allowed to hire J. Ben will be offered 15 times seven, which is uh, 105. It's above his expectation, so it's good. Uh, so if Tom is the captain, the cost of the group is going to be 
35 plus 105, which is 140. And lastly, if Ben is the captain, we're going to pay his minimum expectation. The captain's ratio is going to be 30 uh, divided by 15, which is 2. Then we're going to offer Jay 10 times 2, which is 20. That's below his expectation, so we cannot hire Jay. We're going to offer Tom 5 times 2, which is 10. And this is again below his expectation, so we cannot hire Tom. And that means that Ben cannot be captain because there are no groups of two workers that satisfy the conditions. And now we choose the minimum cost between the captains, which is 120, and this is the value that we want to return. Okay, so let's start with the code. We'll start with the naive way and go from there. So I'm just gonna start by uh, getting the uh, number of workers. Then we're gonna need a variable for the mean cost. I'm going to initialize it to the maximum possible value a double can have. In C++ it would look like this. Now we're going to give each worker a chance to be captain. So we go from uh, 0 to n. Now we want to calculate the uh, captain's ratio. It's going to be uh, the captain's expected wage divided by his quality. Next we're going to calculate how much we're going to offer uh, each other worker. We're going to offer the quality of the worker multiplied by the captain's ratio. Then the offer is accepted only if it is larger or equal to the expected wage of the um, worker. So we're going to need uh, an extra vector here that will hold all of the uh, accepted offers. So I'm going to call it accepted offers. And now if the offer is larger or equal to the expected wage, we want to add the offer to the uh, accepted offers array. Now at this point, if the size of the accepted offers array is uh, less than K, it means that this worker cannot be captain because he cannot form a group of um, K workers that satisfy the conditions. This is the exact situation that we had with Ben being the captain in the example. Okay, so we just wanna move on to the next captain. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna find the sum of the K smallest elements in accepted offers array. Finding the K smallest or K largest elements in an array is actually a very common uh, problem with a very common solution. And the solution is to use a heap. For K smallest, we wanna use a max heap. Now, this is not the main topic of this video, so uh, I'm going to do this very briefly. If you want to get more information about this algorithm, uh, you can just search for uh, k smallest elements and uh, you will get like a million results. So uh, for now, let's just write the code for this. So we're going to define uh, a max heap. In C++, it's called a priority queue. We're also going to need a variable for the sum of the heap, initialized to zero. And then we're going to build the heap out of the uh, k first elements in the accepted offers array and update the sum of the heap. Next, we want to iterate over the other um, uh, elements in the accepted offers array. So start at k all the way to the end. And if the heap is not empty, and if the uh, current offer is smaller than the maximum element in the heap, then uh, we want to replace the maximum element with this current element. So the cost uh, for the minimum group that this captain can form is actually exactly the uh, sum of the heap. And then we wanna keep track of the minimum cost out of all of the captains. And now we wanna return the mean cost. So let's try this. It's pretty inconsistent with the capital H here. Okay, so the code works for the example, but it's not going to be accepted because of the runtime. So let's think about how to improve this. So I wanna focus on this line here. An offer to worker X is only accepted if it is larger or equal to the expected wage of the worker. The offer is equal to the quality of the worker multiplied by the ratio of the captain. If we divide both parts by the quality of the worker, we get to this expression here, which means that the only offers that are going to be accepted are the ones to worker that have ratio that is smaller or equal to the captain ratio. So if we sort the workers by their ratio, we will know in advance which workers are going to accept our offer. All the workers that are on the left of the captain in the sorted array 
will accept the offer, and all the workers that are on the right of the captain will not accept it. So we could just avoid making them in the first place and save time. So let's get back to the code and see how it works. Okay, so the first thing that we want to add to this code is uh, an array of uh, workers that is sorted by the ratio. Each pair will contain the ratio and the quality of the worker. And the size of this array is going to be n. Now I'm going to initialize the array. And now we're going to uh, sort this array. So it's sorted by the ratio. Okay, so now we don't need to give each uh, worker a chance to be captain because we know that workers at index below k minus one will not be able to form a paid group because they don't have uh, k workers that have uh, smaller ratios, right? So we can start this loop from uh, k minus one now we already know the captain's ratio because we calculated it here, right? So you can just take it from the workers array like this. And we only want to look at workers on the left of the captain because these are the workers that are going to accept the offer. So we can stop this loop here. And then we can also remove this um, condition because we know that, that, that all of them are going to accept the offer. And we want to also um, take the quality from the workers array and uh, not from the quality array because we want it to be sorted. So uh, it's here. Now we don't need this line, right? Because we know for a fact that the accepted offers array is going to be uh, larger than K. So we can remove it. And the rest of the code stays exactly the same. Okay, so let's try to submit this. Okay, so as you can see, this is still taking too much time. Uh, so uh, let's look at what we can do next. So basically what happens in this section is that for each iteration i, the captain is worker i, and we want to find the k smallest elements in this array. We want to find the k smallest offers to workers that are on the left of the captain. So that's why it goes from zero to i. Then in iteration i plus one, the captain is worker i plus one, and we want to find the k smallest elements in this array that goes from uh, zero to i plus one. Now this feels like a lot of duplicate computations, right? It would be great if we can somehow reuse the results from previous iterations and not start from scratch for each captain, right? The problem is that these offers are not the same for each captain because they depend on the captain's ratio. So the trick here would be to just remove the captain's ratio out of the equation, like that. And now this array is exactly like this array plus this one extra element, right? Because it's just an array of the qualities uh, which don't depend on anything. So by the time we reach iteration i plus one, we already know the k smallest qualities in this array. And all we have to do is decide how this last element fits in. And this is pretty easy. So let's do that in code. Okay, so because we now try to find the k smallest qualities and not the k smallest offers, we can just remove the part that calculates the uh, offers, right? We can also take the part that initializes the heap and put it outside so it's only done once. And again, because we are talking about qualities, this is not a double, it's an int. This also. And this is not for the accepted offers. We want to uh, put here the qualities and the qualities are... So now we have the sum of the k first uh, qualities. So let's also compute the uh, cost for the first group. And we don't need this here. We can just put it here. Okay, so now we also have to start here from k and not k minus one. And now we also don't need this loop here, right? Because for each captain, all we have to do is figure out how the uh, captain's quality fits in, which is the last element in the array. So we don't need the loop. We can just take this part and do it once. And of course, instead of this uh, term, we need to put in the captain's quality. So now the sum of the heap is not the sum of the offers, it's the sum of the qualities. So we need to multiply it by the captain's ratio. And I think that that is it. Let's try it. Okay, so let's try to submit this. 
Now this should be k minus one. Okay, so this is a success. We passed all the test cases and with pretty good time. So let's say a few words about the complexity. This loop will take O of n uh, worse time. And then sorting the loop would be O of n log n. Building this heap is O of k. And then this loop would take uh, O of n log k because we have uh, n iterations. And uh, with each iteration, we do a push to a heap of size k, which takes log k. So that's how we get to n log k. So the total time complexity would be n log n because this is the most uh, time consuming part, right? So uh, the time complexity of this algorithm is O of n log n. Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope it helped you guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.